Don't be ashamed, Sir Vega. Show your true colors. Show that orange ring of life. Anyway, these are the Sir Vega XLS 6s. And these were sent to me last year by a fan of the show who said, Oh, you want to review some Sir Vegas? And you can keep them. And he just sent them to me. And I'm like, oh, cool. And I've just put it off because they're free speakers that aren't really even sold anymore. And Sir and Vega, I had the, well, the M5s way back in the day. And I'll pull this grill off too to show you how easy it is. But um, Sir and Vega basically is known as the party speaker of the world. And you'll see them in bars and you'll see them in frat houses and you'll see them <coughs> doing various things. And my father used to have the Sir and Vega passive subwoofers, like the 12 inch. I, mean, I remember watching Jurassic Park on Laserdisc. So, does that date me any? And I remember we each took turns sitting on the subwoofer as little kids. And the dinosaur would, would go up to get the leaves and then it would land. And then that fucking subwoofer would shake the shit out of the house. Granted, any subwoofer I have in here, like hot locked in a closet in the garbage, would destroy that Sir and Vega today. But my god, good memories. Good memories. Anyway, six and a half inch with a crazy waveguide that makes it like... I kind of knew what to expect getting these out. And I didn't quite... It's not that bad. Honestly, it's not that bad. I had them up in my stands. I put them up in my stands. I'm like, all right, I'll do it. And I don't have the tube uh, pre from the IFI running right now. So it's just straight through. And I was listening and I was playing movies and... Usually what I'll do when I put a speaker up here that I haven't used in a while is I'll just put down on the screen and watch a movie. Or should I just like listening to music and, and I'll wait to be offended. Just wait to be offended. You want to know if you like somebody? Ignore them. Just walk around them and just wait to be offended. And if you're never offended by anything they're doing in the background, they start talking about shit. Now, what the fuck is it? If you're offended, that's it. But nothing really. Nothing really offensive about these. They're middle of the road. I'm going to take this grill off. Hold on. Yeah, you got to get a screwdriver in there and you got to pry it. Isn't that how you do it on every speaker? Come on. There we go. Nice and sharp. I don't even know what year these speakers were actually manufactured, but it was not within the last fucking five now i'm gonna put this here and push inward there we go are we learning yet terminator 2 reference so there's your lovely grill metal by the way hiding your paper cone serwin vega with the orange surround it's a foam surround right before butyl rubber was used and they're definitely, they got no wife factor. They got nothing to do with the wife factor. The orange cone, I mean, I got the light on it. And it's like, I remember if I push it back a little further, we'll catch a little bit of that, uh, that wave guide doing a thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's no... <sighs> they look like Sir and Vegas. That's the thing. They remind me of my childhood. They remind me of exactly that. They remind me of like going to places and just seeing them and going, oh, they got that orange cone. They're cool. They're so cool. And those Sir and Vegas usually sounded like shit. I didn't know that till I was able to, you know, play around. But I'll be gentle with these. Because they're probably, of the Sir and Vegas I've heard, the, the most respectful ones. See, in there is a soft dome. One that I've jammed my thumb into many times, picking it up like this and just, oops, too far. And having a soft dome in the back of this giant waveguide sort of removes what I was fearing the most, was the sharpness, was like the, ah, uh, ah, uh, it never happened. Listen. That's rather pleasant. This is Kodo Karina's theme, all right? Don't don't ask me. K-O-D-O. Look it up. These speakers are actually pretty damn versed in, like, classical music. Like, not 
just Andrew WK, who is great, but not just Andrew WK. It can do gentle, silent, quiet things, and it could do them with tonality. Judy Garland's over the rainbow. And that's mono, obviously. You see this? What? Great. Days of the New. Guitars plucking. If I, if I gotta call them out, and I gotta call them out everything, I'd say the only thing that's... These are a little V-shaped. But the treble never hurts you, and the bass... Well, actually, you know what? Forget I said that. They're not really V-shaped. Because even though they're a six and a half, and it's a relatively big box that's ported. You can see the two ports on top. A lot of effort went into those. They, they don't... Some speakers, the, the Yamo C103s, which I don't want to compare these to Yamo C103s. Yamo C103s are like a thousand dollars a pair. And these are not, but they still still have like, there should be some low end there that's not showing up. What did you expect? Loving me so. There's just something about them that's just off and you can't, you, you look at it and it looks, looks the part and yet it's off. It's just, what, what is, I can't figure out what this is digging into my hip. What, why don't you make the list? Why were you never the thing that everyone was talking about? Tweeters, separation, imaging. Vocal clarity is excellent, but there's, there's a duh, duh, and I know another <clears throat> pair of speakers that duh would be doing more than this is doing. Yeah, I think it's strange that Sir and Vega let you down in the bass department, but these have... That tweeter, I don't hate this tweeter. Is it JBL Studio 530 tweeter? No. But it's going in a good direction. It's certainly not an offensive, like, I don't know, just shove some shit like five inches back in this plastic dish and see what happens. That's Postmodern Jukebox's version of Halo, by the way. Oh, there's some bass. This is Dennis Colleen Seaside Rendezvous from the Stockfish Records, closer to the Music 3. So, exceptional recording quality on all the Stockfish Records stuff. And I'm trying to use it now to just figure, come on. I like you. I, I really, really like you, speaker. But why, why can't I love you? I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe if I, it might be bias. It, I'm looking at them and I know Sir and Vega. And it's hard, even listening to them, to put that out of my mind. And that was before I took the girls off. And now there's just orange cones. And, mm. There are signs in the heavens, star wandering, and it's written in the... I'll tell you what, <laughs> if they have a party piece, it's they get fucking loud. Get it? Party piece? The party piece? They're fucking max volume, we're half volume there, max volume and foobar. You wanna blow them up? They're free. I feel bad if I blow them up though, I like the way they sound. Yes, I believe I will see you again. I mean, Keep it's loud, I'm walking. And blue. Keep me Jesus, I mean, they're getting loud. So, I mean, they're, they're an unoffensive pair of Sir and Vegas, they get very loud. But you can't buy anymore. This is Mac DeMarco, my old man, that just did a nice little 
little left right you know salt shaker back and forth I, I, I wanted I wanted to just save this review for a bad review because I usually I got products that I'm like all right maybe it'll be good the, the vetters the vetter speakers maybe the vetters will be good no maybe these will be good no maybe the, maybe these will be worth the price no and I'll, I'll know that when I start that review, I'm going to say, these are shit and they're shit and everyone loves my shit reviews. These don't get a shit review. They don't get it. The only thing they have not working for them is they're lacking a little bit of what I expect the low end out of them. And again, that could be my bias towards I'm waiting for Sir and Vega base to show up. But the treble is like that. I, I love the waveguide. I love the wave. I love your waveguide. You got a beautiful waveguide. They sound musical. Who knew Sir and Vega had it in them? If you took the, the Sir and Vega logo off this, and you did something to change the, the looks, because they look fucking ugly. You're ugly. I love you. You're ugly. And you put another brand in them, and you hid the orange cone, and I put them in a room, and I put a bunch of assholes, and that's what I call real hardcore audiophiles now, is just assholes. Put a bunch of assholes in the room, and be like, alright assholes, what do you think of these? These are a French set, made in a small village by a craftsman, and he charges uh, $1,400 a pair, it's very, very good. I wouldn't play that song to them, I'd play this song. Like how my random knows exactly what I want. Piano and depth. It's fast to forward. Pretty sure those assholes wouldn't have anything to say. But oh, that's very nice, very nice. It would not be like, oh God, Sir and Vega sound. Blah. And I remember the Sir and Vega sound. It was tweeters that hurt you, and it was bass that killed you, and then mid range was sold separately. <laughs> Die hard with a vengeance, so to speak. I have no problem leaving these up in my stands. These are a no problem speaker. They have no problems. I have no problem leaving this up here. I'm not like working. There's been a couple of speakers where you put them up there and it's a, even the Wharfdales, the Wharfdale Diamond 10.1s, I had them up there and I liked them and there was a, the treble got a little bit too sharp and I wanted them off. Sharp, overly sharp treble that offends me. That's, that's my line. That's, that's my line. Muddy, you got no clarity in it, that's another line. But these have nothing that I want to really complain about. This is a terrible review of a good speaker. A good review of a terrible speaker, though those, those get a million views. This is sort of like, yeah, you're ugly, but you don't sound like you look. Oh, Otis. You put a subwoofer on with these, and you wouldn't be missing much, like at all. I don't even know, honestly, I didn't even look up the history of these and know what price they sold for. I'm assuming, and this is completely a guess, I'll find out and link it in the description below, because I'm going to find them somewhere, I'm assuming these sold for $350 a pair, probably $300 a pair. If it was more than that, well then I got a great gift, but I don't think it's going to be that much. Favorite movie, by the way. One of my favorite movies. Go look up. Go look up my science project. Watch Mike races Gito. What? Thought your goat was faster than this? Matuski's a fag. 
I want to get a bumper sticker that says Matuski's a fag. No one will get it. No one. I could drive around until I die. 80 years old. Just Anyone get my bumper sticker? No one will get it. But I would get it. Oh! Sorry, I, Mr. Robot comes on and I make that sound. It all, I uncontrollably make that sound. This is uh, believinginerasing.au from Flame One. This is a song that would have low end. Oh, it's trying. It just can't, it's just not making sound. It doesn't make, it doesn't make the low end. It's almost like these were sold with a 2.1 and they're supposed to be a subwoofer in line. And I could make a subwoofer go in line. I could do that. And then I could do that. Because the IFI ICANN Pro is preamping everything and I've got those subwoofers hooked up into it. So now, let's start that over again. Here it is. Listen. Where was I standing? The little finites are all perfect. They're perfectly fine. They don't hurt at all. And now those are on, so it's like boom. And I know this isn't a song you judge speakers to, but fuck you, I love this song. The entire Mr. Robot soundtrack is like, world class. Really? If they sounded anything like this without the subs, I don't know what I'd do with them. But they need those subs. I need a sub. I can't believe it's a six and a half inch, relatively fucking huge, Serwin Vega monitor. Needs needs a sub. So there you go. Uh, sound demo. I don't know. This is a short one because, I, I mean, you can't buy it. So unless you have specifically one of these in your, like, basement, garage, bar, dorm. You buried them with the hookers you killed in your dorm that time. And you dug up the, the hooker because it stinks. But you found the speakers. Let's see if these speakers are any good. You look up on YouTube. Hey, who's this zero view asshole? He's talking about these hooker speakers. The dead hooker speakers? Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Yo, yo, Jeff. Yo, see, I, I told him. See, I told him like this. There ain't no reason. I'll say this, and you go off center. Like I'm, I'm, I'm OCD, so I sit there, which is the dead center of there, and I can hear it perfectly. You move a little bit, like even just a little bit, and now that's the only speaker playing. So that's the waveguide being very precise. I haven't played with like the, all the angles humanly possible. Be cool if there was a robot that could rotate those for me. And then, you know, because one of the things I like about my ohms or about other better speakers is that when you move a bit, you still hear center. It'll still sound like vocals are coming from there, but not these. These you put on no shelter. No, it's just that speaker. It's just, forget even set, it's vocals. Just, just that speaker sort of goes, and now the speaker's playing. So, very localized sound. All right, sound demo. Ooh, I should have some Clementines. Sound demo in the description. Wallpaper, which has something off with it too. I can't, can't quite tell what it is in the description. And, uh, yeah. Links to the history of the Serwin Vega... XLS 6. They ain't bad. They ain't bad. Put them with a sub and they ain't bad. Shit, which one was which? I gotta go back perfectly. Actually, I kind of, I really like them without the, like this. Because, I mean, then you don't even know they're Sir and Vegas, mostly. If I didn't have these speaker lights on, how would you even be able to tell? Perfect. Nice and easy. Mm. Mm. Anyway, yeah, links and sound demo. And I have hit that with a hammer and just send it.